Welcome to my channel Daily Bulletin News. Days of Our Lives may have a new serial killer on its hands, just as it sets up Nicole's endgame. Days of Our Lives started the week with fireworks and ended it with a trip to the grave. Well, two trips, actually. We may finally be moving on the Abigail mystery. Rafe may have investigated his last case. Connie and Bobby are proving a surprisingly unhinged duo and just about everything is now in place for Nicole's exit. So let's jump in and do our best to unwind the latest Salem happenings. Murder 1. And 2. So how about that Connie twist? Now that we're getting more details about what happened, honestly, anything's better than what the temporary writers did with Gil. I know Lee's death was so long ago, a lot of fans have moved on, but making his murderer someone who was already dead and gone was just… lame. At least this way we get to see something play out and Connie does make sense from an utterly bonkers, psychotic, unhinged point of view. That true crime obsession thing set it up pretty well. Not that everyone who loves true crime is a murderer. I love it but I would not go on a date with someone because I thought he actually was a killer. And now it looks like Connie may have put Rafe in the grave too. I wouldn't count him out though. Though killing him next to an open grave is a much smarter murder than running around town with blood on your dress. Talking to yourself like Connie did with Lee. We've gotten no hint that Galen Juring or Rafe are leaving. And how cruel would it be to kill him just as Gabby came back and lost her only family in town? Still, even if he doesn't die, I wouldn't be surprised if Connie at least tried to put another Salamite or two into the grave to protect her secret. Bever it forever. I was half expecting Connie to kill Bobby, but as he pointed out she was on every camera in that place. That would have been just plain dumb. I'm actually surprised he went there though, and agreed to keep quiet for Rafe's murder. I thought he'd been pulled back from a super dark, evil guy when Ron Carlovetti and the writing team returned, but now he's, at the very least, an attempted murder. Accomplice. I don't know, it's not a good look for him. Blake Barris, though, is doing great with the material. Bobby's a lot more interesting than Everett and Barris' performance of Bobby, pretending to be Everett but just being slightly, subtly off could not have been easy to do. I'm kind of hoping that when they're integrated, their personalities merge a bit and Everett gets some of his alter's edge. But if anyone should have seen through it, it should have been Bobby's ex-wife and his shrink. Especially after he insisted he be released. What now, though? Bobby is going to pretend to be Everett so he doesn't have to tell Jenna about Connie, but now he can't try wooing her again, because then people will know he's Bobby. He painted himself into a corner, but then that's what we always think on soap operas and there's always an out. Gabby's game. I had so much fun with Monday's episode and Gabby's press conference. Dan Furerigal did a great job switching between rage with Stefan and Gabby one minute, then looking like a wounded puppy the next whenever Nicole unleashed her anger on him and the Holly and EJ scenes were surprisingly touching. She's ticked at him, but she also kind of understands his desperation. As much as a teenager can. But I was also surprised at how much Nicole seemed to understand it too. I was expecting a lot more rage from her. She didn't even throw his rings back in his face, she just handed them over. As for what's going to happen with Nicole and Eric, I pondered that very thing earlier in the week. We're in, as I said in the headline, Nicole's Endgame. There's just two weeks left and I don't know how they're going to end up. If anyone has a theory about who's leaving, and if slash how folks like Eric and Holly are staying when Ariane Zucker leaves, I'm all ears. If she hadn't specifically said Nicole's not dying, I'd start to wonder if the show would keep everyone but her in place by having Connie kill her for overhearing or seeing something she shouldn't have. I'm still trying to figure out what Gabby knows, though. Stefan's point that she didn't pull the press conference stunt just because she feels bad for Eric, but also because she loathes EJ was valid, but I can't shake the feeling that there's more to this. She's being way too nice to Ava, even offering her a job and all. Is she just toying with Stefan and Ava before throwing what they did in their faces? If she doesn't know, I have a feeling that's going to be part of EJ's revenge.
He'll find out what happened somehow from Kristen or Iva talking about it. Then lob that bomb into Stabby's midst and hope it destroys them. Hello and farewell.